Yo guys, what is up? Welcome back to some more Zero Hour. Welcome back to another Pro 1v1 match. Today, it's actually a fixed nine games for the final set. I have the $300 round robin, which is myself against Boykis. So uh, yeah, I don't often like watching my own replays back, but I read comments on the previous one when I post gameplay without commentary. People don't like it, so I'm going to provide commentary on this last one. But it's probably the last replays of me that we will watch in a while, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Down in the bottom left, we got myself for the Cyan GLA Demolition. And then up in the top right, we have Boyka with the red GLA Demolition. Uh, so this is the first matchup is always a mirror. So in this case, it's a demo mirror. And I decided to go for something funky. I tested this a few times um, against a few a few other players before, before the set. Idea here is that my arms dealer will be super, super quick. Notice how his is super, super late. And the idea is that'll go for the, the, an ultra fast TNT. Like, look, mine's a real already, and his fake isn't already built, isn't even built yet. So, uh, yeah, my, my plan here was always to go for a super fast TNT and then just build loads of tunnels and stop the enemy TNT that no doubt will be coming because it's GLA Demolition. The clue is in the name. There's going to be a TNT probably coming. Um, but at the last minute, I changed my mind. Uh, like, this was supposed to go for the arms dealer. And was going was gonna to hit the arms there at the last minute though. I changed my mind and decided to go for a supply. Yeah, you know, normally if you go for a two supply build and you get the TNT on the guy's second supply, you're at a huge advantage, especially if you can stop his TNT from coming in. But the thing is, I decided to skip the second supply. And now his TNT is coming in. Now, if he hits actually my main supply, that's actually really, really bad. Because then I'm on no supplies and I have no money as well. But luckily, I grabbed the last terrorist there. And uh, supply survives. But I'm not collecting on any workers uh, for a good amount of time now. And he's still got map control because he's still got a tunnel here. He's still got a tunnel there in the middle. Got a worker down here. But at the minute, I'm just trying to save that because I don't want him to kill it because he'll gain veterancy and they also gain the scrap there. So I have a load of technicals, probably more so than, than he does. But he's spreading demo traps around and I'm under pressure really to make something happen because I only have a few workers. I'd like one worker. I think I brought a load of workers with this and a bit of a panic when that got TNT'd. Loaded them up inside of here and then brought them over here to try to uh, cause some damage. Realize he's got a tunnel here. I think he could have took that fight because I'm mainly popping workers there. Okay, I do have like maybe one scrap technical, but maybe he just wants to play it more safe going back inside of his tunnel. So I'm significantly behind here because I'm only on one supply. He's rebuilding his second. Set off a demo trap, but luckily managed to dodge it. And again, managed to dodge a demo trap. Complete luck, that is, to be honest. But with the workers I brought over, I've actually built two demo traps in the hope that it might change this game so far. Because so far, he's on two supplies versus my one, and I've also not been collecting for a while. He knows that there could be a TNT there and risks going going onto it and actually does step onto it and loses a load of technicals. Suddenly, then, now that gives me a little bit more of a chance. But I'm still up against it because he's on two supplies. I am building a, building a tunnel. And now I think I can probably push out a couple of quads. If I can close that area down, I probably um, probably have won the, won the game. But the, the positioning of that tunnel there is kind of an issue. You can't really... Push into that with just a few RPGs. Maybe if I had like three more RPGs, I could probably descend on that location. Boy can now coming in from the back with two of his own tentacles. And I'm in a bit of a trap here, to be honest. I'm trying to force fire over here because when you've got a grenade tech, you can force fire over and kill, uh, kill workers, which I am doing a little bit. But then he makes a terrorist. Control fires the ground. I step on it and that's it. I, if, I'd have, if I'd have gone back there, I would have been dead. And if I continued there, I would have been dead as well. So maybe I could have suicided one technical to run over that TNT. 
So now basically I need to go for Simfin as fast as possible or I'm just going to lose the game. He's got Demetrius spread everywhere and a uh, defensive tunnel. So at the minute I'm trying to load up a technical as fast as I can to try and TNT that and then push it. But I think I only get one TNT inside of the technical. Because I'm under so much pressure to make something happen. Otherwise, I just lost the game. So, yeah. In hindsight, maybe I could have stuck with the same strap. But actually made a second supply. Or gone for the arms dealer. Hey, Demetrius pays off for me there. Demetrius is one of the best buildings in the game, as I always say. So, now I'm basically going to go for one big push. Because I either win now. Or I either kill this area now. Or I just lose the game because I'm only on... Uh, one supply. Thinking about it, you know, you could actually do a three supply build here because you could do one on that end and one on that end. So I come in for a push. TNT, that was one. Just with one TNT. I think his tunnel can go down here, but I just don't have enough because I've only done this one supply. So I think me changing my mind at the last minute really cause a problem. If I'd have gone straight for the arms dealer, maybe I would have won the game. Certainly you had a better a chance choice. than what I did there. Uh, it worked against players in, in the warm-up <laughs> games that I did, but it didn't work here against Boyka. So yeah, you live and you learn. 1-0 for Boyka. Okay, jumping into game number two. So again, this is a map that I chose and I said in my games against Shea uh, that I tend to pick it a lot, even though my win rate isn't insane on this. I tend to if you pick a map over and over again, you become become more and more comfortable with it and uh, yeah, obviously just generally Im improve over time on it. It is quite like Sand Scorpion, but it's also quite different to Sand Scorpion. You don't have any buildings here, for example, whereas in Sand Scorpion, those supplies there would be down in the bottom left. Um, there's also like crates here, which is uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of like Sand Scorpion design, but the supplies and stuff is in a, in a different place. Um, so back at the base, I am trying to infantry now with the Cyan and... Boyka is GLA Tox. Tox or GLA is probably his strongest faction, so I assume he's very, very happy with that. Uh, realizing that um, there's a lot of water here, where obviously you can't place tunnels and defenses, so a helix will be very, very good. Here. There's lots of areas where you can fly over where he won't be able to do anything, but also if he just goes straight quads and tunnels, the helix might not be able to get very much done. He sent a very early worker here to protect this oil and to seal off the middle. And I decided to go for this helix. Yeah, I thought I left myself a little bit short of cash at one point to make them extra few tank hunters, but in hindsight, it looks like I actually had the cash for it. But that helix there has only got six guys inside of it. So he's coming with a TNT. you got a decision to make there with the helix. Do, do you just go straight to the base and leave that technical or do you kill it? Since it was right underneath, but we'll delay the helix a little bit. And then, and then we'll fly in. But what I've managed to do here, that same minigun that went straight down the middle is actually killing workers. And he's popped one quad, quad and I know he's distracted. Therefore, the helix can fly somewhere and close down a tunnel. So I know he's not going to be paying attention and he's likely not going to pop late because then he'll just lose all the stuff that he does pop. He's got a worker in the base. So that's an okay-ish start for me because he's denied all this map control. And now because of his tunnel position in there, you can fly around the back and maybe take out the arms dealer. So this helix will die, but I think unload him. As long as you've got a decent blob, that would be even better if there was eight guys there. Taking out the arms dealer there, very, very good. Actually, a bit of range bug going on there. It's actually damaging the guys inside. So at that point, these are obviously dead. Try and take down as many quads as you can, is the line of thinking. Helix does die, didn't spot that stinger, but it was probably dead anyway. And then from this, I've made a second helix to clear up, uh, clear up the middle, although that tunnel is still alive or the hole still alive but at this point you can deny him all map control because now he's got like what one or two quads decided to go for a war factory now that's going to get cleared he is inside of that but it's just such a difficult position to be in when you've got no map control as the gla because gla's best attribute is that you can just teleport anywhere with the tunnels 
Is his workers still being annoying here? I'm just frantically looking now for any workers he's sending to try and expand. Because when you've got GLA trapped like that on a um, constricted space, like a, just uh, his own little island across... You couldn't even call it an island, really, because it's all, <laughs> it's all connected. But you know what I mean. It's what, one spot with no map control. Then... Yeah, it's not a position you want to be in as the GLA. So at this minute, I'm just trying to keep vision everywhere, make sure wherever he sends a worker, I deny it straight away to stop him expanding. Uh, go for a prop. It's my Twitch alert. Go for a prop. Get a, get a barracks where you want to build your oils. Get the super lotus out straight away. So Boykid does get a big cash boost there, actually. Gets his own oil. And I'm a bit hesitant here. Do I finish that or not? I decide to just kill it in the end. Tech RPG comes in from Boyka. We'll clear that up, but my Helix is going to be weakened. Then he's killed one Dozer there as well. But yeah, his oil gets hit straight away. Outpost Flamer always a good combo for infantry. And if I can kill that oil, I'm thinking here. Then I've just taken out two of his oils straight away. Keeping him down. You want to keep... That's what you want to do. You want to keep the GLA suppressed. And that's exactly what we're doing here. Just need a few more hits on that. Yeah, it's dead. So even if I lost that, that's pretty good. I killed a few RPGs and killed an oil. But then I have outposts here as well. Killing more of his better quads. We have a look how much stuff he has now. He only has two RPGs and one quad. I think maybe he's got an extra RPG inside of there, but maybe. And if I have a minigunner mini inside of there, but if I did, I probably could have just pushed. Maybe even just fought that tunnel and fought this, just evac the stuff. But at this point, I decided to go back. You're never sure truly how much uh, an enemy's got inside of a tunnel. Okay, so always trying to keep him suppressed, keep him inside of his base. I notice he keeps trying to send workers down here, so I'll prepare a minigunner for that. Stop his technical. TNT's here, get stopped. Boyka's just trying to hit that oil because he knows I'm trying to capture it with the Lotus. Gotta be careful with the Helix here because his RPGs, once they fire, they never miss. And now he's got quads coming there as well. So yeah, Boyke regaining a bit of ground, which is not something ideally that you want. But it is always tough against the Tox. So RPGs pop these open, and then if you've got mass squads, it kills all the guys inside of it. So you've got to be careful to make sure you are taking the right fight. Uh, but I've captured this with Melotus. Captured the middle with Melotus, although he's getting it back. And I've expanded up in the top left there as well. But he's also going to push to the top left. So, I was making a bunker in the hope to put my guys inside of there. I do get one minigunner inside, but it would have been far easier if I had just put all the guys inside, but I was paying attention in the middle, actually. I do get that oil back in the middle, but he's killed my bunker. I think, you know, I probably could have took that fight. If I'd have pushed in there and evac all of them and just shot at everything manually. Probably could have dealt with it, but you've got to be careful this TNT because that really is going to change things if that hits a few outposts and really change the fight. So I'm expanded down at the bottom right, collecting that. But he does come in with a TNT. It seems this, t these TNTs at Fargo 
popularized now becoming a big big part of dealing with infantry i think it always kind of has been a, a big part of dealing with infantry but probably more so now seeing tnts every day against infantry so yeah this position down here is good for me because uh i've sold that supply because it's mined out and now collecting from here getting loads of money and expanding here So yeah, wherever Boyk is pushed so far, I've cleared him from here, cleared him from here, even though he tried to retake it, but he is gaining a foothold up here, and that's not what we want, really. He's only on one supply at the minute, which actually is about to dry up, 2k left. So he'd still be on one supply, actually. Lotus, um, for infantry is a super Lotus, you can disable things from miles away. So you always want to utilize her where you can. But yeah, if he takes over this whole area, if he takes over that and that, he can definitely still win the game. So you've got to try to uh, keep him off that. But collecting from here and here is... Well, effectively, that's like nearly two supplies, isn't it? Even though the trucks are moving a lot. There's a lot of trucks. Always have a minigunner. Which I did not. I'm trying to find a way in with Lotus, but I detect that there's a tunnel and a stinger here. Just trying to keep him off there. So I've got 10k in the bank. Now Boyka's only collecting on this supply, actually. Whereas I've got like 12k, so... Didn't realize at this point what a huge advantage I had, really. Because he's only collecting there. But he is expanding though. So he's about to be on two full supplies. So still very, very dangerous. But here I'm about to do three attacks at the same time. Capturing his arms dealer, which he's just sold. About to unload all of this and just take the fight regularly. And coming in with the helix at the same time. And the dozer apparently. That's a mistake because I've blocked that off. That's why. Didn't realize that. But yeah, he's lost all of his units there. Also, your tank enters can often outrange the tunnels, by the way. He looks just clearing up the base and have captured the base of the Lotus as well. But I think he was significantly behind anyway, but I just needed to keep him off from capitalizing on this. If I'd allowed him to take over all of that. Then it could be a very, very different game and he could have a very, very good chance. By that point, I've got like 10k in the bank. He's got nothing left. He's just got a supply. And that is GG. Okay, jumping into the reverse. So down in the bottom left, we have Boyka with the red China infantry. That was a good win for me because I think the infantry should lose here. The Tox should win. Up in the top right, you have me with the um, Jilly Tox in the Cyan Killer. Normally, I would take red, but Boyka is apparently red as well. So I took Cyan here. To uh, make him feel better about himself. <laughs> Boy Kim, for the most part, 80-90% of these games did say GG, by the way. He's one of the other players. Fargo and Shea will never say GG 90% of the games. But uh, Boy Kim will say GG like 50% or something like that. I don't know. If he if he loses. If, if he wins... Sometimes <laughs> says GG. Sometimes he also leaves it open. So yeah, you got to be wary here because you, I'm a tox. I mean, you're expected to win, but you've also got to be careful of uh, Helix flying around, just like I did in the previous game. If you're not looking for a second, Helix swoops in on that area. You lose that tunnel. If you start losing map control on these lanes, it can go uh, very, very badly. So I decide when you think there's a helix, make one technical and put some stuff in it just to be an annoyance. But then also, uh, I'm making quads directly behind that. So I killed two guys there. Bit messy. Kill another guy. Yeah, so killed three. Would have gone inside of the helix, but he's still got actually six. Yeah, so... 
He had an additional one anyway, but yeah, he's only got six inside of the helix. The same as what I attacked with, really. So yeah, I've already got quads, but you still got to be careful because if he closes in on the tunnel and then you pop, you can just lose all your stuff. So yeah, you got to be on top of, without radar, watch your Midas Helix is going because he's probably trying to bait there and then try to go in on this position. But I am quite prepared for this. Also got a worker hiding in the trees. Boyk has gone for a second helix. Boy cat copying. <laughs> but do weaken that helix, but I just clicked on that and just kind of left it, to be honest. But I come for an attack down the middle, but Boyka is now going to sweep in and go for a counter attack. So that's the problem. If you want to be more aggressive and attack, then just be aware he could go for a counter-attack. I probably should have only counter-attacked when I have Stingers in the base. I'm trying to drop that now. It's not going to get up, but it is a bit of a base trade now because now I can uh, kill his supplies. Meanwhile, he's killing the base. So yeah, it would have been better, actually, if I'd have just waited 30 seconds for them two Stingers to finish. Because then these helixes wouldn't be able to come in and do this. Maybe I could even wait 60 seconds just, think, uh, just so I can get another uh, couple of quads out. Another couple of quads. Another stinger. I already expanded here. I didn't really need to go for this uh, aggressive push. I think I went for it a little bit too prematurely. But he is still losing all of his base. This helix is uh, a bit damaged. That's just an empty technical. But I do spot that his last dozer is here. Already killed this one. But now I'm in a bit of danger, really, because that, that supply is rebuilding, yes. But if he just descends on this position, I'm probably dead. i got to be a bit greedy here as well, going for another supply. Probably should be just dropping down loads of stingers. But I thought... Actually, he's going to fly with his licks to try and defend this. So I thought I'd try and capitalize on that by making a second supply. So yeah, this is a little bit greedy. I should have dropped a, uh, a barracks and a stinger or something like that. He's gone for outpost now. Boyk is all in at this stage because now he can no longer afford a supply anymore. If he sells his war factory, he can though. So yeah, last few units here, really. Boyk is coming in and killing my supplies. Killing this barracks. But luckily for me, I grab a worker at this point and realize that could be well his last building. So I grab a worker and place some scaffolds around. So I got some scaffolds down here, scaffold there. Damaging his licks with RPG. He's going to find this though. So yeah, I get that, and he's flying down here to head towards these scaffolds. I'm guessing that's where he thinks or knows they are. But I think, yeah, I can cancel one of these and start building a real barracks. Cracked open his outpost, but now Boyka doesn't have any cash. So I, I see that 0%, and I think, you know what, we just need to one-tap that, and it could be GG, but you never know if he's built another scaffold somewhere else. But look at it, grab the win. <laughs> what an insanely uh, close game that was, 2-1. Okay, jumping into the next one then. We've got a decent matchup then on Snowy Drought. Down in the south, we've got the red Jilly Stealth for Boyka. And then all the way up in the top, we've got myself with Cyan uh, USA Air Force. So I think it's winnable both ways. I still think Air Force is stronger. It's the strongest army in the game. But a few builds crossed my mind here. You can either go like Comanches or you can just go regular Vs. 
or you could do like a one airfield with a raptor fire base here with a barracks spam a few missile defenders around to stop things that are coming in but in the end i decided to settle for just a war factory barracks but i prioritized the barracks in this direction to try and get hold of that building as fast as possible because sometimes boyka likes or actually any gla player likes to put a few rpgs inside of there and build a tunnel around the back and it becomes so hard to deal with you gotta end up combat dropping it but then you gotta make sure you kill the worker on time as well so there i was looking for his worker if i'd have gone a little bit further forward i would have found it So Boyka coming in with his first technical. Start rebuilding the power straight away. Get back online. Yeah, take RPG from him. Just bring the Chinooks over to try to block their shots so I don't lose his V. Do not want to lose that V at all. Boyk is now already coming in with the quad on the right hand side. Actually, that looks like one, you know, but there's actually two inside of there. And this actually does bite me a little bit here. Because I thought that was only one quad. But you see the DPS is putting out. It's double the normal quad because there's two. So I actually, uh, yeah, that V goes low when I actually thought it wouldn't go that low that quick. So yeah, a bit deceiving. Yeah, no point taking a five without V, but he's also sending a quad. On the left hand side, he's really trying to stop me from collecting. Clear this up on the right. I'm taking damage over here, and he's creeping forward here as well. So yeah, he did a nice job to be honest. So he's just gone for a technical with two, t two TNTs inside to kill the power. And then he's sort of then transitioned straight to quads and pushing the sides. I think, you know, he could expand a little bit quicker here. But is he going... Oh, he's going straight for oils. Okay. Straight for oils and expand into a third. Okay. So, yeah, he's doing a very good job to harass, to, to be fair. Because I'm now having to deal with the base. But meanwhile, he's actually capturing two oils and expanded to a third. So he's in a really... Uh, he's in a really strong position economically. And, it, and he's damaged my economy as well. Because he's stopped me from collecting damage in Chinooks. But I am preserving units. Don't think I've really lost any of these. But yeah, two oils... And three supplies is kind of bad. He's on double arms dealer. No palace in sight just yet. I thought I'd cleared this area, but now I see him popping again. Bringing the Chinooks here to just distract the fire, but also block the RPGs. So if the quads kill them Chinooks, I don't really care so much. It costs 950 to replace. Whereas a full V costs more than that. So And, and, and they take more damage. And they can take damage and they still collect, so as long as they don't die. But even if they do die, like I said, it's only 950. Now I can push down the left-hand side. Quite fully loaded Vs. Three are literally completely full. Always a bit hesitant to push in here. But when I see him building a worker there, but building a tunnel, I thought I could push in there. But he did have a secondary one. Yeah, you just got to be careful not to push into RPGs and quads because you can lose the Vs very, very quick. Looks like Boyka preparing a TNT. And Boyka always likes to go for a crazy TNT. Lose my ambulance here, which is very, very bad. So he's gone for a TNT around the back. But just pushing, looping back on myself, killing the quads. And his TNT doesn't really work out. I was trying to be unpredictable about where I was going. Also thinking about just going down here, unloading inside of here, killing these two buildings, just being an, an annoyance for him. He stuck out two Vs there pretty well with the RPGs. I think he could have already started his palace, you know, because if he gets buggies out... I 
I got no ambulance here now because it got picked off earlier. Need to rebuild that. Here comes the ambulance. We could desperately try to hold on to this position. But he is losing quads and it's giving me loads of XP. I just had to push up against this completely. Do clear the position, but I'm losing these for it. Bit of a pre precarious situation for MVs for a very long time, actually. But luckily, managed to micro through it and keep these Vs alive. The boy could come in with a counter attack, which actually I did not see until it is bang here. And that's a very dodgy position to be in because if these Vs die... That dozer can die, and then any buildings he kills, I can't replace, so. And that V's going very, very low as well. Luckily, unload at the last second and still able to laser lock that one, so. Bit of luck involved there, to be fair. Otherwise, you can imagine like five quads there, that dozer's dead, that a search and destroy will be killed. And then he could probably just camp it out and have a lot of better of a chance at winning. I think he's only got one TNT inside of here, but in the game I thought he might have like three or four. Try and hit the uh, strap. But he's desperately trying to stop the dozer before it builds a CC. Yeah, I unload it to try and rebuild that SAP. I actually thought I clicked on it, but apparently not. Yeah, with Search and Destroy, you've got a better chance against the RPGs. See, all them RPGs died pretty much for free. That would be a little bit low there. I captured my oil back in refinery. Yeah, still want to stop him from getting that position because if he gets in that position, these Chinooks are going to have a hard time trying to collect. But I'm level 4 now. Spectre, A10, and Carpet already. So here comes Spectre. I've got Spectre on his oil because a level 1 Spectre will always kill an oil, and an oil kill is always very good. Typically, should always be your first target. The Spectre level one. And then also I've got a carpet here. So I'm trying to bait this out for the carpet then to come in and annihilate this position. But luckily for him, he goes back inside. But still everything gets wrecked and that's GG. I think at that time he quit without saying GG. So yeah, 3-1. Back on Snowy Drought. This time I will play with a Jilly Stealth. I was in two minds about what to do here. Because you see players often going for this three supplies, get a big eco boom and just basically capitalize on that. And that's basically what I went for. I did also think should have been more aggressive and try and close out the game and do damage sooner because if you let Air Force just charge down the map and go to your arms dealers, then it is going to be very, very bad news. So I opt for this three supplies to be more greedy. Get a bit more of an eco boom in the beginning. Try to place down your tunnel. So you can block the arms dealer a little bit. So if these do come down the middle later on, you're actually protecting your uh, arms dealer a little bit. It makes it more difficult to close down the arms dealer. So Boyke comes in with a dose drop. I think he's seen here that I'm going for this three supplies. Wants to try and stop that from happening. I make a mistake here though, force fire the ground to kill the dozer, but I've actually killed my $800 tunnel as well, which is not ideal. Don't want to lose $800 there. Yeah, 
Yeah, the correct way. I should I should have cancelled that tunnel and then force fired the ground. So that's a, a big mistake there from me. Because otherwise that tunnel might actually be finished now. And stop that V. I could have I could have cancelled it, and started rebuilding it straight away. So yeah, I was going for a T I was gonna try and hit that with a terrorist. And then shoot it with the RPGs to finish it, like you see some players do. But actually, I had to drop off them RPGs because that V intercepted it. So that's what happened there. And now it's quite a, a bad start because now I'm going to be quite passive and quite defensive. Whereas uh, Boyka now can just keep applying pressure to this supply over here. Do manage to take out that V, which is sometimes rare to kill a V with a Hellfire on it. With just a single technical. Yeah, lost a few things here, and also my TNT didn't didn't work out, even though it's just one TNT. The RPGs were designed to finish off that, and I kind of rushed it out as well. I should have waited for more uh, TNTs, I think. Go for the crush and the kill on the V. Don't get the V in the end. I don't think I killed any Vs so far. The boy can make a mistake here, leaving that worker alive. But actually, it will get killed there in the end anyway. Yeah, boy can coming in, applying pressure cons constantly on this supply, trying to stop me being on three supplies. I meanwhile, I've done no damage back at home, so it's a really good position for boy to be in. Cancel that tunnel as well. I don't know if I cancelled that and got the money back or not, but it's really difficult now because he's just always reinforcing with his Vs, building the numbers even bigger and bigger. And my uh, technicals are on the uh, smaller number side for sure. He's now got the turret upgrade as well, which makes all of his Vs stronger. I decided just to sell that supply in the end. I've got a TNT inside of there, but it's all an uphill battle, to be honest. Do you manage to get one of his Vs? It's probably not worth it for the amount that I lost. He's got loads more XP than me. And I think he is also preparing a combat Chinook. There's a combat Chinook. And that makes it a real hard combo to deal with because you're mainly making technicals to try and stop the Vs. But then he makes a combat sneak, which then means you need to make quads, which then are not very good against Vs. So this is one of the reasons why I think Air Force is significantly stronger. We can now push out down the base. Going for really a killing blow here because he's going for the arms dealers, bringing in combat snoop as well. And that combat snoop moves in on top of this position. I've managed to take out one V. Going for a TNT around the back. Hit his uh, war factory. And actually, if I managed to hold that, it wouldn't be in so much of a bad position because I have TNT'd him as well. But the problem is, I haven't held it. <laughs> There's like, what, seven Vs and a load of MDs in my base, and that is GG. Yeah, well played to him there. But I think you strategically, going for three supplies there wasn't the best decision, especially if I was going to TNT my own uh, stealth tunnel there that I then didn't start rebuilding as well.
Okay, jumping into the next one. This is Zero Our Carrier is over. This is another map picked by me. That snowy drought was picked by him. Uh, down in the south, I've got the Cyan Super Weapon General. And then up in the north, we've got the Jilly Demolition for the red for Boyka. So I think Demo's got the advantage here. Um, because you've got more expensive Vs. Boy, Boyka's TNTs generally are pretty good. A few different build orders that I thought of here. Could maybe do. You could maybe do two EMPs and then into a barracks, kind of like I tried to do against Shay on Snowy Drought. And then when that first TNT comes in, gets gets hit by the EMP. And then you've got infantry to support it. Try and take out the TNTs before they actually hit your EMP. But I decided in the end just to go for War Factory Barracks and actually cancelled that dozer from building it and send it over here to think prioritize and stopping a worker. Is of a higher value than getting your barracks out a few seconds earlier. When you don't even have the cash to uh, spend it on MDs at this point yet anyway. So yeah, stopping that position is really good. He cancels it as well, which denies him some map control. But he is inside of there, I believe, with a worker. But you know there's going to be a TNT coming. It's just about what can you do to try and stop that. Uh, I decide... Because he tried to build a tunnel there, he's probably not going to have one back here. So I decided to actually go in and try to harass him a little bit. Maybe if I'd have kept it there, though, this TNT probably would have not got in. So he's going for the dozer kill there. And yeah, he does get it. But I've also killed some workers here. Not loads, but some. Got to be careful of the scrap you're giving him now. Yeah, scrap the knife. So yeah, he has done some damage, which is killing that supply. Obviously killed the dozer, but dozer doesn't make too much of a difference. But now we've got two tentacles coming in. I decided without selecting it, that one was the fake and that one was the real, I thought. Turns out it was right. Because if you, if you drag a box over it and it selects it, it's empty. Whereas if you drag a box over it and you can't select it, it's got something inside of it. See that? That one's empty. How about a lift? That Got one's not. Five. Pro tip there for you. Yeah, Booker's TNT is always very, very fast. Sadly for me, they're losing a the V. It's a huge blow, really, because that had a few MDs inside of it as well. Got a V just chilling here as well that needs to be repaired. Nice toxin tractor from him to clear out this building. Puts me in a bit of an awkward fight because I want to kind of, kind of hold that building to help me push through here. But his toxin tractor does change it a lot. And he's going to get another V. No. That was weird because I actually still had guys inside of there. Which is pretty funny. So yeah, at this point, like you know a super weapon, you're in, you're in a kind of weak position. You don't really want to be against Emma bikes. He's I, I know he's probably got a, a flanking tunnel, he might be getting his oil. Uh, I think one one of your best chances is to close down the arms dealer from the beginning, like I always say. 
I'm losing Vs here, but the reason was I was trying to save this dozer. So I wasn't paying attention for a second because I see this technical coming in. So I pick it up and save the dozer. But he's just coming into the main base. And looks like he's going to go for the supply. Let's get the supply and the power. So at this point, got to run in and do something. He has a lot of technicals, though. And it's a very, very close battle, to be fair. I think if he'd have run in and maybe run over some of these MDs, maybe that would have gone better for him. But there's a lot of scrap here, and I know I've reset his technical count now. So if I can just get reinforcing Vs here and close down the arms there, then I know it'll be a good position. These uh, MDs are weak. Still one more technical, but I've got Vs coming through the mid. So yeah, I brought a load of rangers because obviously my base has been TNT'd a lot. I have a lot of rangers. And I'm always trying to reinforce. I'm trying to bring this ambulance here as well, but I think he spotted it. Yeah, he spotted it. So that's going to give him some scrap. Don't think I was on the ball there. But I killed his arms dealer, but I didn't realize he rushed out of palace so fast. He's rebuilding a uh, barracks. Yeah, trying to micro as best I can to try and fight these. I know some of them are scrapped up, so you've got to be careful. But yeah, see now he's got the demolition upgrade. That means generally he's probably got a bit of cash because to afford the palace and demo upgrade isn't the cheapest thing in the world. But yeah, he's got the oils. Just kind of massive. So yeah, even though I've cleared his main base, still not the greatest of positions in the world. Because I'm aware he's got the oils on the left. He's got a rebel in my base, actually. Picking off my Vs as well. This is leaving me on not very much cash because that one's going to dry up soon. I'm only on one dozer. Boy, the majority of the map control. He's got more tunnels in the middle and he's got the oils on the left. Yeah, that V's probably going to die. I suppose one thing you can do is get flashbangs and put a few ranges inside of your build inside of your Vs, then you can flush out these buildings more easily and break through. So yeah, he's rebuilt an arms dealer on the left. He's got an arms dealer here. He's building a palace. He's got a TNT ready to go. Whereas I'm building a strat. It would be kind of an okay position if I had this oil. But the fact that he's got two oils. One of them being mine is kind of bad. And now he's got a Jarman out. He's level three as well. So when that CC is finished, uh, it's going to be a ambush. So yeah, maybe... I shouldn't just have lost as many Vs as I did. Because then otherwise he wouldn't be level 3. But when that is out, you know what's going to happen.
So I realize he's got a, a BB trap on here. So I bring two rangers. One to set off the BB trap and sacrifice himself for the cause. And the other one to actually capture it. But he's coming in with another TNT. Goes for the war factory. You only need one terrorist there. But. Search and destroy. Yeah, aware there could be demo traps here, so sometimes you want to st step, you kind of want to go forward a bit, let the drone discover it. And then against these units, uh, sorry, against buggies, you never want to take a, a ranged fight. You want to take a uh, fight at close distance. I was trying to push in there. And here I go for the oil, whilst I was trying to get my oil back. But look what's going on. And that is one of the most ridiculous things in the whole of Zero. So I have set off the booby trap, and this guy's now going to try and get this for the greater good. But actually, John McCall's on the way, and this is going very, very badly. Yeah, here's a bit of a bug on this map, by the way. I think CNCHD created this map. Like, I evac'd him and clicked him to capture this straight away, but he's kind of just got stuck. So yeah, I don't know. I think the terrain on that map needs sorting out. Come with the combat drop, trying to flush this out. <laughs> One of the guys in there dies, just kills all my rangers. He's also stopped that. It's coming in with demo bikes, trying to hit the strat. Luckily, it survives should repair that straight away really but now he's on like a third supply well actually it's the second supply now he could also expand over here if he wanted to it's in full control really he's detonated a worker there he's coming in with his toxin tractor flushes it out and yeah it's going from bad to worse really he's probably all, all over from the point where um From the point where I tried to push his arms dealer, and actually I did close down his arms dealer, but he already had a palace and took the oars, so I think it was already probably decided from there. I mean, at this point, I've only got one Aurora out. Do Capel is uh, jamming into the stratosphere, though. Where is he going to land? Trying to see if we can see him. He landed somewhere. Oh, there he is. He landed directly uh, where, <laughs> where he took off. Just didn't make it to outer orbit. So yeah, I have got all my entrances sealed off now, but the problem is he's still on two oils and an extra supply to me. That wasn't the best hit in the world. But we could build in loads of... Uh... Oh, actually a third. No, he's building another arms dealer because he sold this one over here. Uh, but he's building loads of markets spread around. Try and settle in for the later game. Trying to collect some cash from the middle. There was a chance he could have popped there to try and kill that V and then the Aurora would have hit. He didn't do it. And he stopped my Ranger again. CC is incoming. Yeah, it's just so annoying because I want that oil, but he has stopped me getting it over and over again with demo bikes. Uh, Jean Mankel, the booby trap earlier. Makes you think to actually just kill it in the end. Jean Mankel's going to make a reappearance over here on the right. Got my Aurora back out. I go for the force fire here, but he's actually turned around. See, I'm bringing rangers again. Or one ranger, rather. Try and capture this. Let's see. I'm just going to get my strat now as well with them bikes coming in over this cliff. Nice little positioning, to be honest, by Boyka. So, yeah, I'm just trying to turn this oil situation around for so long, though. I now killed his oil, and if I captured that, I'm in a better position. 
than before. But now that's 100%. That's just like ridiculous. Because he's just stopped the Ranger and detonated his buggy again. You are so yeah, GG. Well played there to Boyka. 3 2 is a score. Okay, jumping into the reverse. So Boyka will play Super Weapon now down in the south with the red. And then up in the top, we've got the Cyan Julie Demolition for me. So I, I think Demo's stronger here, but I don't think it's absolutely impossible for the Super Weapon. So my line of thinking here was to be as aggressive as possible. Don't let it go late game. Try and kill him uh, yeah, as fast as possible. So he's going for a different build than what I did. So he's going for one ranger over there. Second ranger he will drop as well as the dozer. And then into a second supply. So quite a greedy build because he's going for two oils, two supplies. But I see his ranger here, and I think in my head that he's only going for one supply. And oils. So if I just deny both oils, then he should be in a really weak position. But I didn't realize actually behind this, he's actually gone for two supplies and oils. But I stop his dozer. Gonna stop this oil at least. Bit risky by me then, because he could have killed that scaffold. I did manage to stop both of them, so yeah. His base is now a little bit open. He's got a few missile defenders here and there, so it hasn't really paid off that much. Now I got my technical coming in. Can drop off a TNT, might be able to kill one infantry with that. Do get it and also damage the power, which is good. So yeah, stopped his build order so far. But Boyka has still got himself on one war factory and one barracks and an EMP on the right. So I can only attack really from this left side. So one of these is a TNT. Not that one, it's this one. A drop off a worker there as well. Trying to be as aggressive as possible. Trying to jump on top of these MDs. Trying to hit his supply. But at that time, I thought that was his own supply. But then I do see this one with this technical now. So he's kind of stopped that attack. I'm now coming in with the next attack. Kill these uh, rangers. Want that tunnel to finish, ideally. But I do see that his Chinook flew over to try to get the oil. Come over to TNT. And that's quite a nice TNT, really, because killed bees, killed missile defenders, wrecked a load of things, and have stopped his uh, oil here as well. So yeah, he's kind of compacted now into his bottom right position. I managed to get this tunnel up as well. And Boyka quits out GG. It was a nice attempt there by him, actually. I think maybe... Maybe there was a chance for, for that build order to win. I'm not sure. Yeah, 4-2 is the score. Okay, jumping into the next one. I just realized I had the uh, score wrong for a little while there, but they had announced, so it's 4-3 is the score. And this is the last matchup. So Nuke and GLA, and then a reverse of it. So down in the south of Tournament Desert, Boyke has chosen this one. He's with the Red Gilet Demolition. And then we have myself as the China Nuke in the Cyan Color. So yeah, a few different options you got as the Nuke crossed my mind here. Thought about War Factory and a Barracks, getting a bunker and then maybe going into a Helix or something like that. Or, or maybe even straight into a prop. 
but the build order I decided to go go for here is actually uh, go for a Gatlix and a War Factory. The Gatlix will stop the tech RPG that no doubt will enter your base and maybe be able to stop some TNTs. And will also force him to go quads. And then meanwhile, your Battlemasters can wreck the quads. And then you transition into a prop. That was the uh, kind of line of thinking. I think one of the times I last played a guy called Azuz, he would do this strategy um, with the Gatlix and, and, the, and the War Factory. And actually did pretty well or even beat me a few times with it. So that's why that one came into my mind. Hmm, if I'd had gone for some kind of oil cap build, actually. Might have been able to grab that oil because uh, this worker here. Building that tunnel was kind of late. Lucas Technical coming in. Tries to hit the uh, battle mass, but doesn't quite get it. Does kill it in the end. Now going for the dozo with the TNT. One thing I didn't realize here, actually... Is that, that that TNT is still alive there and actually gets two trucks. I didn't realize that was on guard mode. I didn't realize those two trucks had died because I was paying attention here and here. So for a while now, I don't actually rebuild them trucks. Do find that he's going for an oil cap though and get the crush on that, which is good. But he stopped me on the right. He stopped me on the left. And those two trucks are still dead. I did not realize for a long time. Meanwhile, I'm going for a prop. Go to flush out this building, clear that with the Gatlix. Yeah, them two trucks losing them for a while, not re rebuilding them for a while, hindered me quite a lot here, I think. Jalea has a better chance on this map than some of the other maps because you've got all these fortified buildings in the middle. You drop a tunnel here and grab two of these buildings and you seal off the whole middle entrance. And then like on the right as well, you can get, get hold of these. So, um, Yeah, I think I think GLA has a better chance on this map against Nuke than on some other maps. Like Desolated District, for example, a really, really open map. You would probably always pick Nuke there. On this one, maybe different. So I rush out my Lotus, grab the uh, oil, trying to force fire that down because no chance of me getting a uh, tank into there anytime soon. So if I can stop him from taking it later on, it might help me out. Might as well get the licks doing something. But do take out his Rebel, realize that means he's got the oil. But he's coming in with a TNT, which is pretty good by him, actually. As soon as I've captured it, he's coming in with a TNT straight away. So he continues in with his technical. Drives over a load of mines before going down. And I'm now going to try and push the uh, front. But he's already building a palace down at the bottom right. But now the Overlord's out. If you can catch him without a palace. Uh, and head straight for the main base. It's a, good, a good position. But the fact that he's got a palace out, Jarman would already be on the way. Uh, means these overlords are probably going to get sniped. So yeah, realizing that bunker there is pretty full. 
Well, he could try to come in with TNTs here. I don't know if he's trying to come in with multiple, actually. That one was a fake. This one is the real one, but I've disabled it. But the ECM gets cleared. But that makes me think, you know, when he goes for a TNT like that, that he's actually not on a palace. Because that's kind of a desperation move to go for a TNT on Overlords, I think. And you don't have anything else to stop it. But little did I know, Jarman is actually already out, so these Overlords can get sniped. Yeah, did manage to find down a lot of RPGs, but there's also still a lot alive as well. But his uh, Jarman snipes my Overlord. It's an expensive unit, that $3,200, even though it's not the best decision in the world. Although it's one of the most painful decisions in the world. It's better to put an $1,800 Lotus in a $3,200 tank rather than give the tank to the enemy. So realizing he's on a palace, he's on the Jarman, probably going to be busters coming out soon. Try to uh, do what damage we can here as fast as possible. But Jarman sniping these overlords. So tense moment here when he's got battle buses out like this. What to do with the micro or the overlords and the ECMs? Drop off the guy inside of my overlords. And retake it. But he's still got the Jarman out, so I need to keep these Lixes alive, really. But he pops here, and he's also got another quad. This is a big moment, actually. Taking out that Lix there. is big, because now I can't reinforce this. I can't retake it, and now he's going to take one of my overlords for himself. It's probably the same one that Lotus was inside. Lotus has probably been shot to death inside of it. So yeah, that's a bad position now because he's on 8k. I'm on 1k. That was my last big main attempt there, really. Because now I just... Uh, I'm going to get sniped by the by the Jarman. There's no other way. I think two supplies, two war factories might have been a better build here. Or um, just go for the oil straight away. Oil cap straight away. Or you can actually go for a supply. Yeah, supply in the middle to collect from there, but you can also truck rush with it, which then allows the battle masters to gain. So I get level three now, carpet and artillery on the oil. He's actually not on that much, I suppose. He's not inside of those buildings. About to artillery that. He's not on a mid-supply, but he does have his main. He's obviously got worker shoes, Jarm and Kel, and this compact little base with uh, with markets. And obviously, I don't have very much either. <laughs> Yeah, I thought I could go in here for a second, then I realized about that beacon that he still has a uh, still has a tunnel there. But that's a deadly, uh, <laughs> deadly attack now. I'm trying to pick off these with the Lixes. Do you manage the whole mode one of the buses? Yeah, the second one, and that's still. At the hole. And he's got a Jarman Cal coming as well. So, very difficult to push here, to be honest. And he's expanding behind this. Sorry, very difficult to hold. I mean, takes out one of my overloads there for free. And that is GG. 4 4. So, we'll go to victorious. a decider. Okay, so over to the decider. This time, I'll play with a GLA down in south with the Cyan. And then up in the top, we've got Boyko with the China Nuke in the red. Yeah, I think if played 100% perfect, I think the GLA has got a um, better chance here. However, 
It's not to say that it's massively imbalanced and you're just going to win outright every time, as if you were like air against nuke, for example, or if you were like uh, laser against nuke. So Boyka Varian up going for the truck rush through the middle. Got to be careful now because this truck can either go anywhere and crush the more workers. But also there could be a follow up of Battlemasters streaming straight through the middle. So you've got to be... Uh, you've got to be on it now. Try and punish this middle supply here as well. So Boyka's trying to do what he can with that truck. My TNT there is going to die, but and he's got mines there as well. But if I just put him inside of there, it just prevents him really from collecting at all. And Boyk is now pushing with uh, Battlemasters. We could try to send this battle master around to try and get something done, but I am pretty on it making scorpions. Boyk is now collecting fully on two supplies, making the second war factory back at home. He tried to scrap the night air preemptively, and I think he'd lost the five hundred dollar barracks to maybe once or twice. Get one of Boyk's trucks, and I pick off a dozer here as well. Then allows me to get some scrap. Realizing there's just mines on the on the supply because he can't have mined that already because it's brand new. So now I've got a chance of getting the super tech. We can still push him forward with the flamer and battlemasters. Control fire the ground there to make sure there's no mines and grab myself a super tech. That does change the game a hell of a lot because now that can run around and just kill everything all day long. That too as well, so self-heal. Kill the trucks at the front. I remember harassing there as well. I kill him one truck. So Boyka at this point, I think is starting to lose here because his harassment hasn't done all too much. Put my workers inside of there. Boyka's taking damage at the front. He's got mines here. No point risking the super tech, I think. Like at that point, would you want to lose the Super Tech to kill the Dozer? I personally don't think so, because Super Tech can run around and cause so much more damage. Like, um... Like, killing trucks and stuff like that. Like, would you prefer to kill, like, four trucks and do loads of harassment? Or kill one Dozer and then have to deal with the Battlemaster spam that will inevitably be on its way? I've got a lot of Scorpions out now. Bit of a traffic jam going on here. We could just flame in some stuff in the middle. Uh, but I've sent a rebel all the way over to the top right in the hope that it might get there. But not very optimistic about it. Because it is a long way for it to travel. The Boyka supply is now in danger. And I'm still running around with this super tech. So I managed to get, I've got my own oil, but he's flaming it down. And I managed to get a Boyka's oil as well. I think Boyka's realized he's sending a truck to try and stop it. He's also gone for a Helix. But I'm aware of this. Like, typically this is the kind of build a, a new cool deal. We, we will make an airfield here and go for a Helix. But I also saw it, saw it being built just to confirm it as well. 
But Boyker is losing half of his base. His power goes down, which he's got to spend 1,200 there to remake it. He's got his dozer somehow inside of the supply, which is cool. So Helix is out, only took out one Scorpion, but I've already got quads prepared for this because I detected it um, earlier. And yeah, Boyk is messing up pathing of his dozer here quite a lot. But I also have that oil, Boyk has to deal with that at some point. Yeah, Boyk really has messed up the positioning of this base here. Helix is damaged. Wolf is going to die. He's trying to remake that power. Helix coming in trying to get something done, but there's already a Stinger here. Because I found that um, airfield earlier. Taking out Boyka's Wolf, Wolf Factory. We could take out his own oil that I captured, but he's losing all of his base. At this point, you know it's kind of one, like, Boyker hasn't stood a chance. Mostly for this game, he hasn't really caused that much damage to me. And he still has a dozer, but it doesn't matter because he has no buildings. Still has the helix, still trying to preserve the super tech. Quartz can tank the damage here. And the battle masters can get picked off by the super tech. Helix is very low, but Boyk is losing all of his buildings. Helix dead. Wolf actually dead. And Boyk is trying to desperately rebuild here in the middle. And Boyk has been defeated. So yeah, GG, I win that set 5-4. Uh, but there were several sets I lost throughout this round, Robin. Like, I lost the games against Tensor 4 5. I lost against Merry 4 5. And I lost against Tumstep as well. Um, but he had a pretty decent score. So, yeah, GG. Well played to Boyka. Hopefully, you enjoyed this replay commentary. I probably won't watch my uh, uh, games back for a while. But uh, I'll see you in the next one. GG.